Hello again. This is the second lecture in asynchronous collaborative learning. We start here. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think, according to Einstein. And uh, thinking is much more difficult than parroting. We need to establish contextualized learning. Facts and abilities are learned in isolation, are difficult to absorb and evaporate quickly. So learning comes by doing in a continuous process anchored in the real world. The learner should be inundated in the learning environment with information, confrontation, feedback, negotiation of meaning with peers, reflection, and assessment. So good learning engages at several levels, simultaneously, consciously and unconsciously, mentally, emotionally and physically. Jeez, so a lot of demands on the teacher. So we have to think about collaboration. What is that? So if we start out the first step, individual, and then we step up one step and work with one more to the dyad. And then we can combine two dyads, a group of four. And we can continue and add another dyad until we are six. And maybe we shouldn't have that many more. And then we can combine any of these with a plenary. So that's the learning taxonomy of collaboration. What we need is a holistic engagement for learning. So learning demands participation and doing is not a spectator sport. So knowledge, insight and competence is actively built by the student. It is not passively absorbed. So again, repeat the difference between information versus knowledge. Information fragments is not always sufficient. And effective learning prioritizes activity before presentation, because that means that you work with the information, and when you work with the information, you gain knowledge. So the learning cycle is internalize. That means you read, reflect on it, and then you externalize by sharing. You share your information and the knowledge you have built. You have to discuss and critique what you have learned, what you think your good knowledge is, and then refine and improve. Internalize again, externalize, share, discuss and critique. And this is the learning process, how to proceed from information to knowledge. Some people say that we have three generations of online learning. Others say five generations. So this is a bit confusing. So just have a last point here. What's the difference? We always start with a correspondence education. That's the first generation. We all agree to that. And then the integrated use of multiple one-way media, such as print, broadcasting, or recorded media, such as a video cassette or a CD-ROM. And then two-way, synchronous telelearning using audio or video conferencing. The typical is that you, as a teacher, give a lecture on TV, and you have a huge audience listening and lo looking at your TV lesson, and then they can send the questions to you by email. And then you react to the email by answering the question on the TV. Fine. That also works. But it is synchronous, and that means the students are stuck to one place, one time. Flexible learning based on asynchronous online learning combined with online interactive multimedia. That's the fourth generation according to this system. Rem and then 
Bear in mind the asynchronous is a step forward from the synchronous. And then the fifth step, intelligent, flexible learning, which adds a high degree of automation and student control to asynchronous online learning and interactive multimedia. And that is what we're trying to do in this course.